The case against tattoos. Okay, first off, if you are 40 years old and your arms are sleeved with tats, this video is not directed at you. Please stop watching. If you have a tiny butterfly on your panty line or Harley insignia on your bicep and you stopped at that, this video is not for you. But if you are a 17-year-old girl who is obsessing about what tattoos you'll get when mom and dad are no longer the boss of you, I urge you to listen to me. Think of me as your reasonably cool uncle who is giving you a bit of advice that you didn't ask for. Put up with me for eight minutes. That's all I ask. Okay, let's get into it. Imagine that I was to give you $1,000 and you were free to spend it and didn't have to pay it back. It's yours with two conditions. The first condition is that you have to spend it all on clothes, on one outfit. You can get the most awesome jeans and that amazing leather jacket, the boots you've had your eye on for months, all of the coolest gear that $1,000 will buy. Go shopping, spend every penny, enjoy yourself. And then deal with my second condition, and that is as follows. This new outfit of yours, the fruits of the best shopping spree ever, you will have to wear that outfit for one solid month. Every day at school, every day at your after-school job, you'll wear it on every date and at every party. You will not wear anything else for one month. Still interested? I bet you're not. I'm guessing that you would see the rule I'm imposing as a hideous assault on your freedom of choice, your God-given right to choose for yourself what to wear and when to wear it. Am I right? You're also thinking about how embarrassing that would be. Even I can't imagine being forced to wear the same shirt and pants every day for a month. And obviously, I don't care much about fashion. Think about what you are about to do. You're about to have a stranger draw pictures on your skin. Wait, not on your skin, in your skin. You will come out of the tattoo parlor giggling with your bestie about how cool that rose or angelfish looks. And you'll excitedly show it to your friends even before the swelling and redness disappear. And then you'll wear it everywhere you go for a month. And after that, another month. And another. And another. And then a year. And another year. And another. And another. And another. The girl who held your hand while the tattoo gun shot ink into your flesh will get interested in the guy you don't like and the two of you will drift apart. You'll work for a year or two and then go to community college and find out that you really like learning. You'll transfer to a real college and study something that you never knew existed way back when you and Madison were looking through the tattoo book together. Over time, you will almost entirely forget the crushes you had. You'll laugh at the goofy haircuts you wore when somebody posts pictures on a social media site that isn't even a thing yet. Maybe you'll move to another state. Maybe one of your parents will die. Important things will happen. And every single time you look in a mirror or catch a reflection in a store window or just look down at your own arm or belly or leg, that stupid tattoo will be right where it was yesterday. And every yesterday, snaking back through the years to that one moment, that moment that you thought you knew how you would always feel. There will never, ever, ever be one single minute that that stupid angelfish is not stuck to your skin. Are you with me? Are you feeling this? Listen, I remember when tattoos were for outliers. When I was young, a tattoo was a symbol of either adventure, duty, or rebellion. And it was only men, notoriously inept at expressing feelings, who felt the need to wear a permanent badge. Look, I was in the Navy. Look, I have a motorcycle. Look, I love my mom. I've been on the planet a long time. I've seen a lot of stuff come and go. After the hippie 60s petered out and the disco 70s fell apart and the crazy hair 80s got all played out, the 90s came along. This was truly a decade with no philosophy or identity. And this is when tattoos went viral. What once had been only for outliers became, get this, a fashion statement. Yes, the obvious insanity of a permanent wardrobe choice, like we discussed earlier, was lost on the dopey minds of the 90s. Tattoos caught on and caught on big. And they caught on as a fad. Make no mistake, a fad. You know what fads are for, right? Fads are for conformists. We all go through our conformist years when we want to do everything our friends are doing. But as we grow up, we leave that behind and develop into our own unique selves. 
But if you, while following a fad, permanently mark yourself as part of that fad, you walk into an evolutionary dead end. You get trapped. You can wash the pink dye out of your hair and throw the dopey clothes in the goodwill bin. But you're stuck with the tattoos forever. When people realize they've made a bad mistake, a hell of a lot of us will double down. It's a psychological defense mechanism. This is especially true when you can't undo the mistake. Tattoos are the classic example of this. If you've been stupid enough to get a lot of them in your youth, you will often just say, okay, I'm obviously one of the inked up tribe, and that will be it for you. No more personal growth that might take you into a world where tats are looked at as evidence that you are not a smart decision maker. You'll dial back your expectations of life. A hundred opportunities will come your way, and just to avoid embarrassment, you'll pass on them all. And you may also miss out on true love because your options will be limited. That's just a fact. You can see why I strongly caution people not to watch this video if they are covered with tattoos. In the thread below, you'll see that many of them ignored my warning and now have to yell at me. They'll tell me how narrow-minded I am. They'll tell me that they have never missed an opportunity because of their many tattoos. They'll say that they have no regrets. Well, if you have no regrets, you lack the steering mechanism with which a person navigates a confusing world. Life is full of decisions made on the fly. We learn life's lessons by noting whether we feel relief or regret when we see the results of these decisions. This is how we grow. This is how we thrive and eventually become a wise person with something of real value to contribute. It's crucial that you not get into anything that you can't get out of that you can't grow out of. Does that make sense? So why am I bothering to make this video? Am I trying to ruin your fun? Am I trying to stifle your creativity? No, I'm trying to convince you to stay as flexible as possible as you grow up, to have as many options as it is possible to have. You have no idea what the future holds. If you think that you do, it's only because your experience is limited. The boy band posters that were on your walls in middle school, would you want to see those bands in concert now? Of course not. You've changed. You're always telling your parents that you're all grown up. But you and I both know that you're not. The things you do now will seem silly to you in a few years. I look back on some of the things I did in my 40s and just cringe. How stupid I was. Fortunately, I did nothing that permanently locked me in place at one stage of my development. So I'm free to reinvent myself once again. And people eventually forget all the dumb shit I did. That's what I want for you. Freedom. Please, please, please consider expressing yourself on canvas or with a guitar or some recording gear. Get your thoughts out, your feelings, the real stuff. Not the stuff that just happens to be in the pattern book at a random tattoo parlor. Live for the future. Don't get stuck in the past. Treat your body like a treasure and present it as such to whomever you eventually choose to grow old with. Learn about everything that catches your attention. Adopt the best of it and reject the rest of it. Think of your life as a long and beautiful story, a chapter of which you write every year. If you already have a few tattoos, stop there. Don't fall into the trap of justifying the few by adding a few more. If you are a parent or an aunt or a teacher, please show this video to the girls you know. I'll take the heat. If you can say it better than I can, borrow whatever ideas work for you and put them in your own words. If you've successfully dealt with this issue, tell us about that in the comments. And if you are that girl thinking about inking up, thanks for listening to your reasonably cool uncle. That was very wise of you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and then click the little bell to get notifications. 